In a previous video, I was showing how easy it is to get set up with minimal APIs in ASP.NET Core, and in this video, I want to walk us through an example scenario that I had where I needed to actually be able to list out all of the routes that were inside of my application, and then later on, I'm going to write tests that I can assert some information on these routes. So this particular example we're going to walk through is just some code that you can use if you want to see all of the routes registered to your application. So let's jump over to Visual Studio. All right, so I'm over in Visual Studio, and this is just the weather application that gets created by default when you go make a new ASP.NET Core application in Visual Studio. The interesting thing that I want to be able to explore is that when we start using things like these minimal APIs that you can see that I've highlighted here, I had an interest in being able to understand all of the different routes that were registered in my application. And the reason that I have this interest is because I use a lot of plugin style architecture and I wanted my different vertical slices in my web application to be able to register their own routes. Now, when I go to create an API that I want people to consume, I wanted to enforce that I had solid API documentation. And as a result, I needed to be able to write tests where I could go assert all of the information about the different routes that I had in my app. When I started searching online for different solutions, a lot of people were saying that I could go up to the builder or the app itself, and I could start writing code that essentially, I have it on my clipboard, it essentially looks almost like this. All right, so when I was searching online for solutions for how to do this, a lot of the suggestions were actually saying that we can use the app class that we have here, and then we should ask the services property to be able to get the service of I endpoint route builder. And all of the information online that I could find was actually saying that if we use this, we should be able to ask this service about the routes that are registered. So if I go ahead and run this, we'll see what happens. When I step over this and I hover over the service variable, it is null. So unfortunately, this doesn't work for me. I actually even asked Copilot how this works. And the answer that it gave me was literally that if you want <laughs> to be able to get the endpoints, you must be able able to have this I endpoint route builder service registered. Now I tried doing this on the app itself. I tried doing this on the builder itself. And in both cases, I was not getting anywhere with this. The solution I found is actually something that I have on my clipboard and I'm just going to go ahead and paste it and then change the variable name because I borrowed this from another application I have. And what I found actually is that asking for this particular service endpoint data source allows me to actually query all of the endpoints. So one interesting thing that I want to show you is that when I put it here and I put it right after using HTTPS redirection, um, I have it before actually registering a route and I have it before app.run. When I put it here, let's go look at what this gives us back when we ask this service for the endpoints. So when we do this query this early in the application startup, it actually gives us back no endpoints. And you might be saying, well, Nick, that's obvious because we haven't actually registered the route yet. And good point. So let's go ahead and move that until after we register the route. And a surprise for us is actually that even after we've registered this get route, which is the weather forecast example, we still get no results in our endpoints collection after asking this particular service for all of the endpoints. Now, I am not an ASP.NET guru, but I thought this was kind of interesting because at this point in the life cycle, I would have expected that the, since the app was built and I did register a route, that I should be able to get the endpoints back. However, what I found in practice is that if I go and put that check right after the app.run, I'm actually able to get all of the routes routes just as expected. Now it's unexpected for me because I didn't think I had to run it first. So one of the challenges with doing this though is that app.run is actually a blocking call. So if I were to put a breakpoint after app.run and press play in Visual Studio, we're not going to hit that breakpoint until we actually stop running the web server. So what can we do to get around that? Well, if we run it asynchronously, and assign it to a task, we can actually await the task. But before we do the await, we can actually go run this code here, which is just what I had above and pasted it down here instead. So let's go ahead and try this out and I will run it. 
So what we see when we actually go check this endpoints collection now is that I do have a single item in here, which is our get weather forecast route. And that's exactly what we'd expect because we only have a single one. Now, a little preview for the video that I want to make right after this one is when we go inspect the metadata, we can actually go see what types of properties we have configured on this route. In my particular case, I was interested in being able to write integration tests that prove all of the routes that I have in my application are configured as I would expect. So things like rate limiting, authentication, all of that fun stuff, and being able to do this code and actually query for all those endpoints allows me to go write those style of tests. All right, so that was just a super quick video for today. And in this example, we got to walk through how you can query for endpoints in your minimal API ASP.NET Core application. And the secret was that in this case, I found that using I endpoint route builder or whatever that interface was that everyone on the internet suggests, that just doesn't work in my case. That might be an MVC thing and maybe that's not anything to do with minimal APIs. But anyway, I found that using this other class actually works in our favor. But the trick to using this class was that the app actually had to be started first. And I'm not sure if there's some other gotcha that I'm not aware of where you don't actually have to run the app and maybe you can fool it into getting you those routes earlier. But in my particular case, if I start up the app and then ask that endpoint service, for the routes, I'm able to get all of the information I need. So in the follow-up video, which I'll put right here, we'll end up looking at how I wrote tests to assert all of my APIs.